ಶ್ರೀ ಗಣೇಶ ಶಾರದ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಉತ್ತರಂ ಯತ್ ಸಮುದ್ರಸ್ಯ ಹಿಮಾದ್ರೈಶ್ಚೈವ ದಕ್ಷಿಣ ವರ್ಷಂ ತದ್ ಭಾರತ ನಾಮ ಭಾರತೀ ಯತ್ರ ಸಂತತಿ ದ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ನೆಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಟು ದ ಡಿವೋಷನ್ ಟುವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ದ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಡಿವೋಷನ್ ಟುವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ದ ಗಾಡ್ ಡಿವೋಷನ್ ಟುವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ದ ಗಾಡ್ ಹೂಮ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಇಮ್ಯಾಜಿನ್ ಇನ್ ಯುವರ್ ಓನ್ ವೇ ಸಮ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಇಮ್ಯಾಜಿನ್ ದ ಫಾರಮ್ ಆಫ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಅಂಡ್ ವರ್ಷಿಪ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಸಮ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಇಮ್ಯಾಜಿನ್ ದ ಫಾರಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಶಿವ ಸಮ್ ದ ಗಣಪತಿ ಸಮ್ ದ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಸಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದಮ್ ಕುಮಾರ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಫಾರಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಗಾಡ್ ದೆ ಅಸ್ಯೂಮ್ ದೆ ಕೆನ್ ವರ್ಷಿಪ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಬೈ pure devotion and though lots and lots of religious acts were mentioned they none of them were important compared to that devotion and they all need to be performed if at all if one could afford to conduct such kind of worship such kind of div- religious act they should do it if to afford it they can do it but even in that act the devotion is a necessary thing to reach unto the god so every individual can practice their own way to reach up to the god and that is the speciality of this land called bharata varsha welcome to chapter 6 of skanda purana under mahesh under the maheshwara khanda and the kedara khanda in the previous chapters we were seeing how even the great yagna that was performed by daksha was spoiled because he was had not invited shiva so he was not having a proper devotion towards shiva he insulted shiva so his yagna was spoiled whereas the worship by nandi the vaishya though it was done with an excellent way following all the rituals all the procedures as told in the vedas but in spite of the the devotion was not sufficient enough compared to a kirata who was not performing any of the religious act as it is prescribed he was simply offering the water and he was simply offering and doing the worship in his own way but still because of devotion the devotion of kirata was accepted in place of the devotion of nandi of course at the end even nandi was accepted because he was a friend he was a, he had become a devotee of kirata because nandi became a devotee of kirata so nandi was also accepted same similarly in case of daksha as long as he was having the ego and he was insulting shiva he was rejected his yagna was spoiled only after virabhadra cut off his head and put the head of a goat in that place when he eulogized shiva only then daksha was accepted so devotion is of the utmost significance the sages at this point inquired with the lomasha maharshi or the suta muni how did the preeminence of linga exclusive of shiva came to be established how the linga was established oh highly fortunate sage let this be narrated to us who are eagerly desirous of learning about it lomasha continued to tell the story about how the linga came into the forum Lord Shambhu wandered about in the forest Daruvana for the sake of begging alms the sole lord of the worlds with quarters of his garments almost being naked having the cluster of his matted hair loosen that lord who can be understood only through the vedantas the great lord the greatest among leading yogis the soul supporter of the group of worlds is greater than the greatest he is the great lord of the worlds who exalted dignity that noble soul ishwara assumed the form of a medicant beg for the alms in the daruvana forest at midday the sages o brahmanas the, the all the sages went to the sacred places to the for the bath 
from their hermitages so at the hermitages at that time all the wives of those sages were remaining in the hermitage they came towards shambhu on seeing shambhu they spoke to one another who is this personage of uncommon appearance who has come here in the form of a mendicant he we along with our friend shall give him alms saying so be it they went home and joyously brought various kinds of food as alms they were fine and delicate all those rishipatnis the wives of the rishis were fine and delicate they offered everything in accordance with their capacity but with due honor and gentle behavior with all devotion they offered it to shiva the arms begged for by the trident bearing lord of the devas were duly given to him one of the ladies who was struck with wonder asked shambhu who endeared himself very much to her who are you o excessively intelligent one why have you come here as a mendicant this is the sacred hermitage of sages why do you not sit here in our hermitage on being asked thus by her shambhu said laughingly i am ishwara o lady with excellent dresses i have come to this holy place on hearing the words of ishwara or shiva the wife of that sage asked him you see that you are ishwara or shiva o gentle sir of exalted fortune you are the lord of kailasa mountain but o lord how does it happen that you are begging for alms and alone and single because they didn't knew what happened to dakshayani on being as thus by her shambhu said to her once again these words i am bereaved of dakshayani hence i wander about nude for the purpose of begging alms o lady of excellent hips i am free from any wish or desire or any expectation of advantage from anybody o beautiful lady without sati the wife of shiva all the women in the world do not at all appeal to me i am speaking the truth to you o lady of large eyes on hearing the words spoken by him the lotus eyed lady said there is no doubt that women really accord pleasure by their touch unto man such pleasurable woman o shambhu how, how you can eschew them by a learned man like you how you can reject those women when they can offer such a pleasure pleasure to you in this manner all young women gathered together at the place where shankara was standing the alms bowl of shambhu was filled with cooked food of good very good quality four types of food stuffs with all the six states filled his bowl then when shambhu was desirous of returning to the kailasa mountain all those wives of brahmanas joyously followed him forsaking their domestic duties with their minds attached to him they walked on and on after him so their wives who are supposed to be involved in the domestic acts because they love shankara by their heart one who love god by their heart they turn to become feminine out of their love so this story symbolizes that when all those wives of the sages had left thus the excellent sages reached their hermitages and found them empty and vacant they spoke to one another where have all these women mean our wives have gone we do not know by what damned fellow they have objected i mean who has objected all of them pondering and deliberating thus they searched here and there 
Thereupon they saw that they had been following Shiva. On seeing Shiva, the sages angrily closed in upon him. Standing in front of Shiva, all of them said with impetuosity, What has been done by you, O Shambhu, who profess to be detached and noble soul? You are no doubt the kidnapper of our wives and others. Although rebuked thus, Shiva silently went on towards his mountain. Then that immutable Mahadeva was overtaken by the sages. Observe here, all the sages knew that he is Ishwara, but they were more of a masculine, masculine in nature because of their masculine rashness. Because of that reason, though they recognized Shiva, though they recognized Ishwara, still they cannot accept him and they cannot follow him. Whereas their own wives, being feminine in their heart, they simply followed Shiva out of love because of their femininity and the gentleness. They then all the sages have cursed him thus, since you are the object of our wives. It didn't they know that Shiva was not objecting them. It was only their wives were following him. But they still as ascertained that to the Shiva and they cursed him. You become instantaneously a eunuch. Thus cursed by the sages, his penis fell down on the ground. As soon as his penis reached the ground, it became very large immediately. It increased in size enormously. At this point of a time, some people may have a bad feeling about this genital organ called penis. So comparing penis to linga is often ridiculed by many people. Even people who belong to the other religion also ridiculed it. But remember one great thing about the Sanatana Dharma Parampara that the religion that was born up in Bharata, it never disrespected any individual organ of a human body. Every individual organ of a human body is important for the individual survival, scientifically. Without any organ, person will be considered as handicapped and he will be incomplete without that organ. So whether it is be their leg or be their genitals or be there any part of the body, we give equal respect to all the parts of the body and we respect them. While reciting Rudra, in the beginning we say Prajanane Brahma Tishthatu. That means we assume Brahma to be located at where the genitals are there so that we can worship him. Because it is true, it is through the penis that the regeneration of life happens. That is why it is highly respected. So with that respect, let us continue. From beneath and above, the linga covered the seven patalas, atala, vitala, sutala, patala, tala, atala, rasatala. So it covered the seven patalas in an instant. Then it pervaded the entire earth and enveloped the firmament, all the heavens. There were 14 different heavens, so all the heavens were covered. Then it rose beyond the heavens. So the linga rose beyond the heavens at the top and beyond the patalas at the bottom. There was no earth, no quarters, neither water nor fire, neither wind nor ether, neither cosmic ego, ahankara, nor the great principle, mahatattva, neither the unmanifested one, avyakta, nor the time, no great primordial matter called as prakriti, there was no dualistic division. Everything become merged in an instant. And because since the entire universe become lena, become merged lena into that linga, that is why it is called as linga of the great Atman. It came to be called so as linga because the whole universe got merged means it's in Sanskrit, we call it as Lina. That is why 
since the whole universe got merged into that it is called as linga learned men say that it is called linga because of layana that means the merging of the universe on seeing such a linga rising further and further the celestial sages brahma indra vishnu vayu agni and the guardians of the quarters and the serpents were filled with surprise in their minds they spoke to one another what is the length of this linga what is its girth where is it stop and where is its pedestal all the suras devatas who were worried with thoughts like these then said to vishnu deva said its root must be seen by you o vishnu o lotus born brahma its head must be seen by you then you can justifiably be called protectors because vishnu and brahma are the protectors which they were assigned with the task of finding the root of that linga and the head of that linga vishnu and the lotus born god brahma both of whom were gods of exalted fortune heard this vishnu went to the nether worlds to the patala loka searching for the root while brahma went to heaven searching for the head of that linga when he reached heaven brahma eagerly looked everywhere but that clever lord did not see the top of that linga so the lotus born returned from along the path he had gone and reached the top of meru there he was seen by surabhi the divine cow she was standing in the shade of a ketaki plant and spoke to him in sweet words on hearing her words the grandfather of all the worlds brahma spoke laughingly to surabhi in a deceptive words extraordinarily wonderful linga which has pervaded the entire region of the three worlds was seen i was deputed by devas to see its top i am extremely worried as to what i should report in the presence of devas as the top of that all pervading linga of the noble soul lord was not seen so it is untrue you should tell devas that the top of the linga has been seen by me if all the groups of devas like indra and others were to ask you you witnessed you shall let me say surabhi shall quickly in this matter o devas there are witnesses in this matter o lady of good holy rites you do be my witness along with the ketaki flower so ketaki flower will say yes it was on the head of shiva and surabhi will be the witness for that accepting the suggestion of brahma parameshti with her head bent down respectfully surabhi in the company of the ketaki flower honored it arriving thus in front of the devas brahma spoke brahma said i have seen the wonderful top of the linga o devas it was duly worshiped by me with ketaki petals it is large soft and spotlessly pure it is beautiful and fascinating it is wonderfully lustrous and excessively refulgent such a linga was seen by me like that i have not seen anything else anywhere else on hearing the words of brahma devas were struck with wonder even as the groups of devas beginning with indra stood thus filled with wonder vishnu the lord of all the bestower of spiritual illumination came there from patala immediately he reported to all although i was eager to see the root the end the of the end of that linga he it has not been seen by me as i was moving further from patala i was struck with the great wonder i went through atala sutala nitala rasatala patala tala 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 everything appeared empty and void even the most vacant places of all was ex- examined well 
but it was neither root nor middle nor top mahadeva by whom this universe is sustained is the one in the form of this linga it was due to his grace that you and the sages were born on hearing his word suras and sages honored vishnu then vishnu spoke thus laughingly to brahma o brahma the top has been whether you really saw the top whether it has been truly seen by you who are the witnesses you have had in this matter on hearing the words of vishnu brahma the grandfather of the world hurriedly said yeah i do have the witnesses this ketaki and surabi o oh, devas are the two known witnesses on hearing the words of brahma all devas hurriedly sent for surabi along with ketaki the two instantaneously came there for the work of brahma thereafter surabi was asked by devas beginning with indra he said thus together with ketaki indeed o devas the top of the linga was seen by brahma and worship with the petals of ketaki even as all of them listen an ethereal voice was heard from the sky understand o gods that what is deposed by surabhi and ketaki is a false statement its top has not been seen by brahma and all the devas along with indra and vishnu angrily cursed surabhi who was intent to utter falsehood o splendid one today a lie has been thus uttered by your mouth let your mouth be unholy and impure let it be excluded from all religious rites even though fragrant o ketaki you shall be unsuitable for the worship of shiva there is no doubt about it o good lady that you have lied it is because of that reason even today while performing the shiva puja the worship of shiva the ketaki flower is never used during the worship then the ethereal voice cursed brahma o stupid one why has this falsehood been uttered childishly by you why have you done this along with bhagu the sages and the priest hence you will never be worthy of worship you will suffer from pain the sages who ought to be virtuous will be excluded from truthful statements they will be deluded engaged in disputes jealous and unaware of true knowledge they will be beggars and worthy of being cut to pieces they will perpetually ruin their own knowledge they will boast of themselves they will be stubborn and will censure one another that is what become the plight of all the rishis there afterwards thus they was beginning with brahma as well as the sages were cursed all of them cursed by shiva sought refuge in the linga thus ended chapter 6 of the kedara kanda under maheshwara kanda in skanda purana in which we have seen the linga has pervaded over the entire world namaste sharada devi kashmir puravasini tvamaham prarthaye nityam vidyadananch dehime goodbye श्री गणेश शारदा गुरुभ्यो नम उत्तर युद्र से हिमाद्रेव दक्षिण वर्ष तदारत नाम भारतीय सतति वेलकम टू ऑल फॉर दिस सेशन ऑन स्कंद पुराण टू चाप्टर सेवन अंडर द केदार खंड इन द महेश्वर खंड ऑफ स्कंद पुराण इन द प्रीवियस चाप्टर्स वी हैव सीन हाउ एक्सैक्टली Shiva, who came for begging in the area of uh, Daruvana, was cursed by all the rishis there, and his 
uh, his uh, linga dropped down to the earth and it, it grew into all the three world and then Brahma and Vishnu went out to find the head top of that linga as well as the root of that linga. Both of them could not able to find it. However, Vishnu was very frank and straightforward telling the truth that he could not able to find the root of that linga while Brahma lied in front of all the suras, taking Surabhi and Ketaki flower as the witness, saying that he had seen the head of the Shivalinga, whereas later Shiva himself told that Brahma is lying and he had not seen the head of the Linga, because nobody can find the Adi and the Antya, the beginning and the end of that Linga, because the linga is all pervading in all the three worlds. This is the significance of the Parabrahma, which is all prevalent in everything living or non living. So, because of that reason, Brahma was cursed to be not having the worship. So, you don't find any temple dedicated to Brahma. Very few temples are there in all over India except that most of the temples do not involve Brahma as one of their deity. Similarly, Ketake flower is not offered during the worship of Shiva because it joined hands with Brahma in telling a lie. Now, let's continue. Lomasha Muni, Lomasha means the Sutta Muni, he continued the story. When all those suras and even sages become frightened because of the utterances of Shiva in an aerial voice, Brahma and others who became perturbed and distressed on account of their knowledge or the account of their mistake, eulogized Linga of Lord Shiva. Brahma said, you who have assumed the linga form are of great miraculous power. You who are of the form of supreme soul are knowable only through Vedanta or Upanishads. It is by you who is ever engrossed in bliss that the universe which is rooted in you has been created. You are the witness unto all the worlds. You are the annihilator of all. You are the protector, O Mahadeva. You are Bhairava, O Lord of Universe. This unit of the three worlds has been pervaded by you in the form of Linga. O Lord, we are insignificant creatures whose minds are deluded by Maya. We, namely I and the Suras, Asuras, all the Yakshas, Gandharvas and Rakshasas, Serpents, Pishachas and these Vidyadharas are all deluded. You are the creator of the creators of the universe. You are indeed the lord and the ruler of the universe. You, the supreme person, are both the creator and the annihilator of the universe. Protect everything belonging to us, O Mahadeva. Obeisance to you, O God of Devas. Thus the great Lord in the form of Linga was eulogized by Brahma. The sages who were desirous of eulogizing Maheshwara, the sinless one, eulogized with very great eagerness and respect by means of excellent words recorded in the Vedas. The sages said, we are all ignorant. On account of lust, we do not recognize your status. Indeed, you are the soul, the supreme soul. You are the prakriti, the evolver of everything. You are our mother. You alone are our father. You are our kinsman. You alone are our friend, you alone are Ishwara, you are conversant with the Vedas, you are always meditated upon by persons of great magnanimity.
you are the imminent soul of all living beings like flame of all fuel. Since everything takes its origin from you, you are forever Sarva. The Lord is called Shambhu because Sam means happiness, Sham means happiness takes its origin from Him. All of us, Devas and others such as sages, celestial Gandharvas, Vidyadharas, great serpents have resorted to your lotus-like feet. Hence with mercifulness, O Shambhu, O Lord of the Universe, protect us. In reply, Mahadeva told to them, Listen to my word now. Let it be carried out immediately. May all of you pray to Vishnu, O ascetics, with immediate effect. On hearing the word of the noble-souled Shankara, all those suras bowed down to Vishnu and eulogized him. Devas said, Vidyadharas, groups of suras, all the sages, everyone has been saved by you today. O soul kinsman of the universe, in that manner, O merciful one, O Lord of the three worlds, O Lord of the universe, O abode of the universe, protect all the people. Lord Vishnu laughed loudly and spoke these words. Then, formerly you were oppressed by Daityas, and then I protected all of you. But today, I, a great danger of everlasting nature has arisen from this linga. It is impossible for me to protect you, O Suras, from that danger from this linga. On because now that the linga has appeared, which is all pervading and everything was getting merged into that linga, all the suras, vidyadharas were all feared. And Shiva told them that you all pray Vishnu because Vishnu being the protector will take care of you. However, Vishnu rejected it saying that he can protect them against the daityas or the asuras or the dhanavas. But he cannot protect them against something that is all pervading like the linga. He cannot protect them. On being, on being told thus by Vishnu, Devas became worried. Thereupon an ethereal voice spoke thus, consoling all the suras. O Janardana, choose this linga for worship. Become... Becoming a mass of refulgence, O mighty one, protect the mobile and the immobile beings. Here the mobile beings are the living beings who move from place to place, whereas the immobile beings are like the trees which remain in one place. Though they are living, they remain in one place. Saying, so be it, and honoring it, Lord Virabhadra worshipped it. Because the linga has appeared, there is no necessity to fear. Most of the time, we have a fear towards the God and we stay, we try to do everything in the fear of God and not out of devotion. Here, the Lord Shiva himself is saying, there is no need to fear about the God. Do anyone fear about their parents? It is the parents, the father and the mother who take care of the child. Of course, they do the punish. They do punish the child in order to bring them into the right path. But they never, no father, no parents would ever hate their children. Because that's an universal truth. So, the same way, no God existing, no God known to us would ever hate the people whom the God himself has created. So, because of that reason, we need to have a love towards the God and not a fear towards the God. So, out of that love, now Shiva is telling Virabhadra to do the worship of it. So, Lord Virabhadra, another form of Rudra or Shiva, he is doing the worshipping of that Linga. At that 
from the noble soul virabhadra having the moon for his crest and engaged in carrying out the orders of shiva was worshiped by the groups of suras beginning with brahma collectively virabhadra was a favorite of shiva and was on a par with rudra in the three worlds then virabhadra was absorbed in worshiping the linga the linga had the same form where from the entire universe takes its origin derives sustenance and gets merged with it the whole world appear from that linga and in the end the whole world will get merged in the same linga the excellent ones among those who are the knowers of the reality they call it linga because of its being place of rest to the absorbed the linga became pervaded by the spheres of the cosmic eggs the brahmanda it was embellished with rudrakshas it grew so large that it could not be surpassed by anyone then all the devas and sages of great luster eulogized the great linga by means of the vedic words mean the mantras separately o lord you are minuter than the atom so also you are greater than the greatest hence o lord shiva you must make such arrangements as to make the worship of linga easy for everyone because when there is one linga whose neither root is known nor its head is known how somebody can do the worship of it so for that reason all the suras requested shiva to take many forms many linga forms so that it can be worshiped by anybody at that time itself many types of lingas were evolved by sarva or shiva namely the brahmeshwara linga in the world called satya in the satya loka of brahma sada shiva linga in vaikuntha a well established linga named amareshwara in amaravati the capital of indra varuneshwara linga in the city of varuna Lord Kaleshwara in the city of Yama, Nairateshwara Linga in the city of Nirati, a uh, Pavaneshwara Linga in the city of Vayu, in the Mrityu Loka Kedara Linga as well as Amareshwara, Omkara Linga as well as Mahakala in the Narmada region. Lord Vishveshwara in Kashi, Laliteshwara in Prayaga. Ayambaka in Brahmagiri are also known as Nasik district as well as Bhadreshwara in Kali Draksh Draksha Rameshwara linga in the place of union of Ganga with ocean the linga remembered as Someshwara in Saurashtra Sarveshwara linga in the Vindhya Shikhareshwara linga or Mallikarjuna Mallanatha in Sri Shaila, Simhanatha in Simhala Dvipa or Sri Lanka. So also many lingas such as Virupaksha linga, Koti Shankara, Tripurantaka, Bhimesha, Amareshwara, Bhogeshwara, Hatakeshwara in Patala. these and many other lingas of this sort were installed in all the three worlds by devas for helping the entire universe and thus all the three worlds became full of great lingas similarly gods created virabhad virabhadras portions of virabhadram with the virabhadramshas which is a portion of virabhadra for the purpose of worship there were 28 samskaras means the consecratory rites there in the process of worship of linga they were mentioned by shankara himself there are eternal shiva dharmas mentioned by rudra where virabhadra rudra and other gurus are the preceptors are remembered the sons of gurus have also become famous in the three worlds as gurus only nandi knows factually the greatness of linga so also lord skanda and those others 
who bear his names. All the Shiva Dharmas have been glorified as mentioned by Nandi, the son of Shilada. Many wonderful persons of exalted nature have been glorified as bearers of the Lingas. Linga is held above a dead body by the ancient people. Living with Linga and dying with Linga, these virtuous rites have been established by Shaila the Nandi. The religion of Pashupata established by Skanda is the most excellent one. The five-syllabled mantra Namashivaya is the purest. Then comes the pras Prasadi means the Omkara mantra. The six-syllabled mantra Om Namashivaya is the eliminator of the pranava. From Skanda, it also it was acquired by the noble soul Agastya. Afterwards, due to the difference in the preceptors, many agamas were composed. Of what avail is much talk? Those who utter the two syllables Shiva every day are Rudras themselves. There is no doubt in this matter. Those who follow the path of good people are all Purantakas, mean the Shiva. They should be known as heroes of Maheshwara. They destroy the sins of men. Those who perform rites of devotion incidentally as a consequence of something else by chance or as an act of faith attain the goal of the God. Listen. I shall narrate on an old legend in this connection. Sweeping was performed formerly by a female bird in a temple of Shiva. It had come into the temple for the sake of food. The Naivedya was offered by someone. When, it, when that bird fluttered its wings, the dust particles happened to be swept away. This was considered as a sweeping in the temple of Shiva. As a result of that meritorious deed, that bird went to the excellent heaven. After enjoying the heavenly pleasures, he came back to the fierce world once again. He was born as a daughter of the king of Kashi. He became famous by the name Sundari. Thanks to the previous experience, that girl of auspicious features became a great chaste lady. Early in the morning, the lady of slender limbs was always present at the doorway of the temple of Shiva. With great devotion, she used to sweep premises, the gentle princess Sundari did everything herself. On seeing her in that activity, Uddalaka, the sage, inquired her, O girl of splendid features, you are delicate in body, why do you sweep yourself? O girl of great smi bright smiles, O gentle lady, you have in front of you many men and women servants at your bidding they will do all the sweeping work etc. On hearing those words of the sage, she laughingly said thus, The men and women who render service to Shiva, those who are prompted by devotion to Shiva, do go to the world of Shiva. The sweeping must be done by one's own hands. One should go to the temple on one's own foot. And sweeping is done by me unweariedly. I do not know anything else excepting the single act of sweeping. On hearing her words, the sage pondered, Who is she? What has been done by her previously? By those favor, whatever she had done in her past life, she get all this knowledge about what to be done in the Shiva's temple. Then everything was understood by the sage through the eye of the spiritual knowledge. Struck with wonder, he became silent. After knowing it, he, he became surprised. 
thinking about the power of Shiva, Uddalaka, the most excellent among the learned ones, attained the greatest enlightenment, he became calm and quiescent. Thus ended the chapter 7 of the Kedara Khanda under Maheshwara Khanda in the Skanda Purana. Namaste Sharada Devi Kashmira Puravasini Swamaham Prarthaye Nityam Vidyadanancha Dehimi. Goodbye.